Not only is she pretty, she has a lot of depth to her. She really is smart. Robert Redford, 88, is a Hollywood legend known for his skill and charm. He recently broke down in tears with a confession. This news comes decades after they got divorced and has made people curious about the good and bad times in their relationship. What Redford said about his past challenges the story that has been told about it and shows how deep links shape us. What made him think about this at this point in his life? Come with us as we talk about Redford's relationships, his mistakes, and the things he learned along the way. Robert Redford was born in Santa Monica, California on August 18, 1936. To give him his full name, Charles Robert Redford Jr., he grew up in a poor home. His father, Charles Redford Sarr, first worked as a milkman and then moved up to a more stable job at El Segundo Standard Oil. In order to keep the family together, his mother, Martha Hart, worked as a maid. Even though his dad had a steady job, they weren't rich, and Redford's early years were marked by the hard truths of life during and after the Great Depression. Growing up in Southern California wasn't fancy, and there were times when money wasn't easy to come by. This affected how he thought about success and hard work. Although Redford went to Van Nuys High School, he did not do well in school. He wasn't good at school, and he wasn't good at school, and he wasn't interested in things that weren't related to what he was interested in. He found it hard to stay focused, and it was hard for him to keep up with his grades. Redford did have some good times in high school, though. He became very close with Don Drysdale during these years. Drysdale went on to become a famous Major League Baseball pitcher for the Los Angeles Dodgers. They were both very interested in sports, especially baseball, which brought them together. Robert Redford was very interested in art and sports when he was younger. As a child in Southern California, he was surrounded by beautiful nature, which made him love being creative. Like many people, he found comfort in drawing and painting. This love would help him become a filmmaker and actor. On the other hand, he wasn't just interested in art when he was young. In Redford's early years, sports were also very important. His favorite sport was baseball. He was very good at tennis. He even practiced tennis with Pancho Gonzalez who was a famous tennis player and one of the best in the world at the time. This was one of the most memorable parts of his sports life. Even though Redford loved art and sports, he had a hard time in school. When he went to the University of Colorado, it became even clearer that he wasn't really interested in school. Redford got a half scholarship to go to college, but things didn't go as planned for him there. He was excited about having more freedom in college, but he quickly got into bad habits, especially when it came to drinking. Redford started drinking a lot, which soon hurt both his schoolwork and his ability to concentrate on sports. His drinking problems got worse and worse, and he lost his scholarship because he wasn't doing his work and got bad grades. Redford was having a hard time because he knew he had missed a big chance. Afterward, he said that he was too young and immature to handle the responsibilities of college. His time as an alcoholic woke him up and made him think about the choices he had made and the path he wanted for his life. Redford had a time of doubt after he lost his scholarship and had to leave the University of Colorado. Because there wasn't a clear way forward, it was hard for him to find his place. This failure did, however, give him the push he needed to try new things. He decided that going the traditional academic route wasn't right for him and chose to follow his dream of becoming an artist. Early work in the arts, when Robert Redford graduated from college, he made the brave choice to follow his love of the arts. Through his love of art, he found acting, and he quickly became interested in the theater. Like a lot of new artists, he started out with small parts and a lot of hard work. He had to prove himself in an area with a lot of other talented people, but his skill and drive helped him stand out. Redford's first job in the stage was in the play Tall Story, which he did on Broadway in 1959. And even though it was a small part, it was a big deal for him because it was the start of his professional acting career. Tall Story wasn't a big hit, but it gave Redford the chance to keep working in theater, which helped him gain important experience and get better at what he does. He wasn't a star right away, but each part he played made him more comfortable on stage. As Redford kept getting better at acting, he got a part in The Highest Tree, a 1959 play that only ran for a short time. But even though it wasn't very popular, it gave him another chance to improve his playing. These early parts helped him grow as an actor. In the world of live theater, he was still learning the ropes, but his hard work paid off as he moved up. When Redford was cast in the play Barefoot in the Park in 1963, it was one of the most important events in his early stage career. Neil Simon wrote this play, which was a big hit, and Redford's performance in it got top marks from both audiences and reviewers. It ran for more than 1,500 performances, and it was a big success. Redford was great as Paul, he was charming and funny. This part not only gave him much needed attention, but it also helped him become known as a skilled actor with a bright future. While this was going on, Redford was also becoming well-known on TV. 
In the late 1950s and early 1960s, he was in a number of famous TV shows that showed how versatile he was as an actor. His early work was noticed when he was on The Twilight Zone, a show known for its strange sci-fi episodes. In the episode Nothing in the Dark from 1962, Redford played a young police cop. His part in this show helped him get more playing jobs and become known to more people. He was also in some other TV shows, such as the crime thriller The Untouchables, which took place during Prohibition. Redford played different characters on the show, which showed that he could do a lot of different kinds of work. In the early 1960s, he kept adding to his TV resume with parts in shows like Alfred Hitchcock Presence and Perry Mason. He was able to work with different directors and stars on these TV shows, which helped him improve his acting skills even more. Breakthrough role, his big break, came when he played the lead in the 1969 movie Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. People all over the world knew him from this movie, which changed the course of his career forever. At that point, Redford was a recognized actor, but he wasn't very well known yet. When he was cast as the Sundance Kid in this Western movie, everything changed. The movie, directed by George Roy Hill, was about two bad guys named Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid who worked together to do bad things. The movie was a big hit in part because Redford and his co-star, Paul Newman, got along so well. It was hard for Redford to match Paul Newman's level of performance because Newman was already a big star known for his charm and major roles in Hollywood. But Redford did more than just match it. There was something special about the way he played the part, and the two of them worked together to make one of the most memorable teams in movie history. Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid was a huge hit with both critics and audiences. It was one of the most successful movies of the year and was up for several Academy Awards. He became a big star because of it. The movie's success showed that he could work with one of Hollywood's biggest stars and his performance was praised for being both deep and subtle. The way Redford played the Sundance Kid was just the right amount of tough and vulnerable that people all over the world connected with it. Redford and Newman worked together on many movies after this one, and they always did a great job. A second movie with them was The Sting 1973, which also did well at the box office. Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid really cemented Redford's place in Hollywood. It was no longer just that he was a good performer. He was now his own star and had a great future ahead of him. The person he loves. When Robert Redford met Lola Van Wagenen, he was trying to figure out what his life was all about. During that time, he was still getting to know himself and his goals. At the end of the 1950s, Redford moved into the Los Angeles Varwood Apartments. It was there that he met Lola by chance. When they met, it was the start of a relationship that would have a big impact on both of their lives. Redford and Lola Van Wagenen grew up in very different ways. She was born in Utah and grew up in a Mormon home. Much of her early life was shaped by this. She came from a family with traditional beliefs and has been active in the community since she was a child. Lola also competed in beauty pageants in her area, where her grace and cleverness made her stand out. She worked on her education and personal growth while she was at the University of Utah, even though they came from different places. When Lola first met Robert, it was clear that there was a strong link between them. There was something about Robert that interested her. Little did they know that they were from different worlds, but the first time they talked, they found they had a lot in common. During their first talks, they were interested in each other's lives and were full of questions. Redford liked Lola because she was friendly, smart, and had a good way about her. He, in turn, seemed like a man who was artistic, thoughtful, and looking for more in life. This shared understanding made them connect on a deeper level than just being attracted to each other. After a while, Redford wasn't sure what he wanted to do, but his relationship with Lola made him feel stable and helped him. They talked for a long time about their hopes, problems, and the things that were most important to them. Redford, who was known to be enthusiastic and sometimes rebellious, felt calmer around Lola. She could listen and give him advice, but she also knew that he was artistic and could do anything at any time. Redford liked how she had a strong sense of who she was and how she always supported him. The longer they were together, the more it was clear that they were deeply in love. Even though fame would bring problems, their friendship stayed strong. They built a strong relationship on shared beliefs, deep conversations, and an undeniable chemistry. While Redford was with Lola, she was more than just a girlfriend. He fell in love with her and found someone to help him stay true to himself through the good and bad times of his journey. They were able to bond because they trusted, respected, and understood each other, would help them get through many years of marriage and the hard things that come with it. Marriage and the beginnings of a family Robert Redford and Lola Van Wagenen's relationship became more serious when they decided to marry each other. They did what her parents didn't want, but their love and bond were strong enough to get them through the hard times. They had both happy and sad times in the first few years of their marriage. They had trouble with money. 
Robert was just starting out as an actor. Like many young artists, he was turned down for roles, went without work for long periods of time, and wasn't sure what his future held in the business. It was hard to make ends meet because money was tight at times. Despite everything, Lola was always there for Robert. She believed in his dreams and helped keep the family together when money was tight. During these hard times, they had their first child, Scott Anthony Redford, in 1959. The young couple felt such joy when they became parents. It was a beautiful moment in their lives, but their happiness didn't last long. Sudden infant death syndrome took Scott's life just a few months after he was born. Robert and Lola were both heartbroken when they lost their son. How to deal with grief Robert Redford and Lola Van Wagnen's loss of their first child, Scott, was a terrible blow. Both emotionally and mentally, it was a very hard time for the pair. Their marriage was put under a lot of stress as they dealt with their grief. During those hard times, Robert felt more grounded when Lola was around. Even though it was hard for them to move on, their love and drive kept them together. They looked for comfort in their close friendship and the life they were making together. They were both changed by the event, but it also made their bond stronger. Even after what happened, Robert and Lola kept adding to their family. They had a daughter named Shauna Redford in 1960. The birth of Shauna brought them new happiness and helped them get over Scott's death. Robert and Lola felt like they had a new reason to be parents when they had Shauna. And the size of their family started to grow in good ways. After a few years, in 1962, they had their second daughter, Jamie Redford. When Jamie came along, it made the family stronger, and Robert and Lola loved being parents to their growing kids. Family life was hard for Robert and Lola, especially when Robert's film career began to take off. Robert spent a lot of time away from home because he was getting more parts and becoming more famous. This put stress on their relationship, but Lola was always there for them and took care of the house and the kids, making sure their family had a safe home life. Amy Redford was their third daughter, born in 1970. Robert had had a lot of success in his business by this point, which meant he had to balance the needs of his family with the demands of his job. He did, however, always try to be there for his kids. There were some hard times when Robert and Lola had three kids, but they stayed together and worked together to make their home a loving place for everyone. The way they lived together changed as their kids got bigger. As kids, Shauna, Jamie, and Amy were raised in a home that valued creativity, individuality, and keeping grounded, even though their dad was becoming more famous. Robert and Lola wanted to give their kids a normal upbringing and keep them out of the intense attention that was on Robert's work. Making sure to spend as much time as possible with their family, even when it wasn't easy, wasn't always easy. How hard it was on their marriage. Because Robert Redford was getting more famous in Hollywood, it was harder for him to balance his work life with his home duties. He was able to balance the demands of acting with time for his family in the early years of his work. But as his fame grew, the demands made things worse. He had less and less time to spend with Lola and their kids because working in movies meant long hours, travel, and a lot of focus. What about Lola? She cared strongly about her family and her own interests. Lola found her own voice through action while Robert's career took off. Women's rights and protecting the earth were important to her, and she worked hard to change the world. In addition to running the home, she was very involved in the lives of her children and was their main parent while Robert was away. Her interest in action gave her a reason to live, but it also made her and Robert more different from each other. They lived their lives in different ways as time went on. Lola spent more time on her politics and family, while Robert worked to build his Hollywood career. Their different hobbies made it hard for them to connect emotionally. They had fewer chances to talk because Robert was spending more time away from home. And when he got home, they often talked about things that were not as important to him. It became harder for them to find things they had in common because the bond they used to have started to fade. As the years went by, the inner distance grew. People often put pressure on Robert because he was famous, but Lola was busy with her work and family, so she lived in a different world. They tried to get along. However, the emotional gap between them grew too big. It took them both some time to understand that, even though they loved each other, they were not the same people they used to be. Their marriage finally broke down because of all the stress, and they chose to split up. Robert has often talked about how hard it was to keep their relationship together when he thinks about the end of their marriage. He has said that his unhealthy obsession with his job was a big reason why their marriage ended. They both worked hard to keep it safe, but they were too far apart to make it work. Robert has said that he feels bad that he wasn't able to find a better balance between his personal life and his work goals. Even though they tried their best, the demands of fame and their separate paths caused their marriage to end. Relationships after a breakup. Robert Redford moved on to a new phase in his life after his split from Lola Van Wagenen. This period included a number of important relationships. His friendship with Kathy O'Rear was one of the first important ones he had after his divorce. When they met in the late 1980s, they hit it off right away. 
they were together in public because Kathy was a model and actor. It seemed like she brought stability back into Robert's life after the emotional upheaval of his split because she was kind and warm. Robert was deeply affected by Kathy. She helped him deal with the hurdles of fame and personal change by being there with him and being his friend. However, they were only together for a short time. Because of Robert's busy work schedule and the constant media attention on him, they chose to break up in the end. Even though they were only together for a short time, it was an important part of Robert's life that helped him heal and move on after his marriage ended. Once Robert was done with Kathy, he started going out with Brazilian actress Sonia Braga. Their friendship began in the late 1980s and got a lot of attention from the media. In Brazil and other places, Sonia was famous for her roles in movies and TV shows. She was interesting and had a successful job, which made Robert even more famous. Their relationship was written about a lot in tabloids and celebrity news, which interested fans and the general public, but the relationship had its own problems. Because Robert was well known in Hollywood, the media watched their every move. Their relationship got tougher because of all the attention. But the fact that so many people were interested in their lives put stress on their relationship. Even though they had a strong link, they chose to end their relationship in the end. After they broke up, they were friendly, and Robert still had a lot of respect for Sonia's ability and spirit. When Robert Redford met Sybil Zagers, it was the start of a new part of his life. They ran into each other at the Sundance Film Festival, which Redford started to support small pictures. The German artist Sybil, whose name is Bill, is very good at what she does. One of the main reasons they got along right away was that they both loved art and imagination. Both of them understood how important stories and art were for sharing feelings, which was the start of their relationship. Bile is a strong, independent woman who makes a living as an artist. Robert liked how she had a strong sense of who she was and how dedicated she was to her work. He praised how hard she worked at her art, and the fact that she was independent made him feel free in the relationship. In some of Robert's past relationships, the pull of fame might have made things tense, but Bile's independence gave him a sense of balance, which was nice for him. He felt encouraged instead of confined. Robert's relationship with Bile was a great support, especially when things were hard. In the early 2000s, the Sundance Film Festival had trouble with money, and Robert worked hard to make sure everything ran easily. During these hard times, Bile was by his side. She supported him and helped him stay focused on his goal for Sundance, which showed that she cared about his success in both his personal and professional life. Robert and Bile chose to get married. Their choice for a small, simple wedding in Hamburg, Germany, showed how much they wanted to be close to each other. A small group of family and close friends came to the service. It was a big day for both of them because they made their strong bond and pledged to each other even stronger. They have respected and understood each other throughout their marriage. Bile's creative spirit goes well with Robert's, and the two of them often help each other with their jobs. These two people have made a loving relationship that helps both of them grow as people and as a pair. His friendship with Sybil Saggers has brought him happiness and stability, starting a new and happy part of his life. By the time Robert Redford was 88 years old, he had time to think about his life and the people who had shaped him. He said that his first wife, Lola Van Wagenen, was the love of his life, which was one of the most important things he ever said. Even though they have problems together, he often talks about how much he values the time they spend together. He knows deep down that their bond is unique and will last. There is no doubt in his mind that the bond they had as kids, especially through their struggles and successes, will always be important to him. Redford has also been very open about his feelings of sorrow. He has thought about the decisions he made during their marriage and knows he could have done things differently. He wishes he had spent more time with his family instead of working. As his fame grew, he spent less time with the people he loved, which made his marriage to Lola harder. He now knows that fame and success come with costs, and he knows how important it is to keep his personal and work lives in balance. These thoughts aren't just about remembering the past. He also wants to teach other people useful lessons from them. He thinks that the key to happiness is getting to know yourself and taking care of your relationships. Robert Redford's later years have been deeply affected by the love and loss he has felt throughout his life. Every relationship he's had in the past weighs on him, both the good and the bad. His ideas about love, family, and loyalty have changed because of these events. For him, they remind him of what's important in life support, relationship, and understanding. Not only does his legacy come from his work in movies and for the environment, but also from the lessons he has learned from his ties with other people. He wants to be known as someone who puts love and family first and knows how important they are. In his thoughts, Redford talks about how important love is in all of its forms, including romantic, familial, and friendship love. Life is a journey, and he knows that it has both beautiful times and painful losses. These things have shaped him into the person he is now. They are a part of his life, and he loves them. He is thankful for the love he has known and the lessons he has learned along the way as he looks to the future. 
His life shows us a man changed by love loss and the lessons he learned along the way. From his early problems to his thoughts at age 88, Redford's life is a story of strength and growth. His connections show us how important it is to connect with others. Those things and how they change our lives. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the notice bell if you like this in-depth look into Robert Redford's life and want to see more stories like this. Thanks for seeing.